Yo, it's Rocky Fresh checking in with Hip Hop since 1987.com. Make sure you get in tune. Yeah. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. It's your boy E Money chilling with the homie Rocky Fresh. Now, um, for those who don't know, you got a national acclaim when Ross co-signed you. Eventually signed you back in 2012 mm -hmm. after releasing your mixtape Driving '88. Yeah. You can backtrack a little bit for us and let us know what that conversation was like. Uh, it was crazy, man. I was grinding out of Chicago for a few years at that point. Had a bunch of sold-out shows in the city, and I did a lot of touring. But it was just in a different way. I was always with the rock band, so. Uh, Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy, he took me on one of my first major tours. And uh, with that, I just started building my fan base in a different area. And then uh, my mixtape was getting a lot of buzz, but it was just in a different way. And a lot of the rap fans had to start, you know what I'm saying, taking a look at what was going on. And so uh, I got posted by a couple of blogs with the Driving 88 mixtape. Put out a video for the intro of that joint. It's called Into the Future. You can go on YouTube and check that out. And uh, Spiff, um, the head a and for MMG, um, he saw the video, hit me up on Twitter, showed it to Ross, I guess they was at Philippe's, and he was just going crazy over the video. He went home and downloaded my mixtape, and uh, next thing you know, I got a call that uh, he had wanted to meet me. So I flew out that Monday and uh, went to LA to meet him. It was on the set of the Take It To The Head video. We just talked, you know what I'm saying? We related, how, how people always say, you know, real recognize real. Yeah. So uh, situation was like that, you know what I'm saying? The money was right, but also, you know, he had a, real, had a real respect for my sound, and um, with that, he wasn't trying to change me. He understood that I was young and that I was going to grow into something great, and uh, you know that's the plan. And we rock. Okay. Now, in 2009, I know you dropped your first mixtape, and like you said, you were selling out shows. I actually yeah. heard your first show sold out. Yeah. Is that kind of like that moment you was like, you know what, I was made to do this? Yeah, totally. I, I don't even think I was taking rap serious into that to that show really because. Um, I'm just a, a realist, you know what I'm saying? And I understand that sometimes you can have a lot of dreams and they may not be meant for you. So for my first show, that was a, a real test, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, to see where things were going to go. And it turned out well. And I've been blessed to do a bunch of sold out shows since then. So, you know, we still on the right track. All right, now you all over that SM3 project. Yeah. That, uh, what you used to, yeah. God is Great, and also that Black Grammys record. Yeah. Now, Let's talk about that. That's one of those records that kind of get the conversation going, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get people to who had the best verse, who I like right. more, you know what I'm saying? How'd that record come together? Uh, man, you know, Rose got a crazy vision. Mm -hmm. And um, like I told you, you know, he got a lot of high expectations for me because I got high expectations for myself. So when we discuss music, we're not even looking at, you know what I'm saying, who people may think that I'll be looking at. Like, I'm always trying to be looked at as a level of a Kanye or a, you know what I'm saying, a J or a Rose, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, those guys that's on the song with me, they embody them same characteristics. Mm -hmm. J. Cole, Wale, Meek. And so with that, you know, he saw fit for me to be a part of that class, and that's how the record came about. Okay. Now let me ask, how you feel the early stages of your career is going so far? Uh, things are going a lot better than I, I would have expected them to. You know, when I started rapping out of Chicago, there really wasn't nobody getting on at all. We had uh, Kanye, Lupe, Twister, Common, and then uh, Bum J was coming up. You know what I'm saying? He ended up getting locked up, so free him. Mm -hmm. But uh, outside of that, I'm really one too many youngest doing their thing. Shout out to the cool kids, too. They was more of a group kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. So I was like one of the first solo artists in a long time to really be trying to do the rap thing in Chicago. And, uh, you know, I was real. I don't know, open to see what was going to go down. I ain't really had no timeline. I probably would have been doing this, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, until I was 30 plus or something like that. But to see me get the, you know, the little success so early is just motivating. And now I'm ready to work harder than ever before to keep it moving. Okay, now, Chicago is much like Philly. It has a lot of different sounds off the yeah, world. You yeah. touched on a couple of people. Like Philly, we got Meek, Eve, The Roots, yeah. Jill Scott, Chicago, like you said, Kanye, Chief Keith, Lil Durk. Yeah. How did all those different sounds affect your music? Because it seems like you kind of have that like that electronic slash alternative sound when it comes to yeah. that, that old school Chicago hip hop. Yeah, I mean, it's just a thing where I always want to be different, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that I could always respect other people that's different than me. I think that's like the problem with the game, why you see so many haters not, because everybody want to be like everybody else. And once you see somebody do something, you kind of like knock them because mm -hmm. you can't really find your own identity. 
and I feel like it's been easy for me to navigate through the music because since the jump, I knew what I wanted to do. I always was a fan of other kinds of music, and I always thought it would be cool and uh, you know showcase my talent in a new way if I can blend those sounds with some of the things that most rap fans are familiar with and giving them a different vibe. And you know, I'm still trying to achieve that. I'm getting better. My producers are getting better. And with that, you're going to hear it on a higher level than ever before on my next solo joint. But I find it easy, you know what I'm saying? And with that, I could easily respect Lil Durk's music. I could easily respect Chief Keep, easily respect Reese, Lupe, and the rest of them guys, too, because they all got their own movie. Okay. Now, um, speaking of what you're releasing, that um, Electric Highway, yeah. you released that in 2013. Yes, I heard sir. that Electric Highway 2 might be coming soon. Uh, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do Electric Highway 2, but I definitely got a solo project coming mm -hmm. soon. And uh, I'm doing a collaborative mixtape that's coming out uh, this year um, in December with Casey Veggie, so everybody be looking for that too. Okay, now I know you and Casey, y'all both Puma, Puma yeah, mates. Yeah. What made you sign with Puma and will you get your own sneak? Uh, yeah, um, well, first, touching on your first question, you know what I'm saying? Puma has always been classic in the sneaker culture. I remember just watching, you know what I'm saying, old school movies and that was the case that they was rocking, you know what I'm saying, they always had a huge place in hip hop, um, just getting some history from it, you know, it was the first shoe that wasn't a basketball kick, you know what I'm saying, that the hip hop world really embraced. And so uh, with that being said, I knew it had a lot of history and I wanted to bring that vibe back. And then also to see how well they took care of Meek and the situation that went down with him, it was also motivating on that side too, but I always had respect for the brand there. You know, that made it a lot easier. Okay. Now, uh, I know you said y'all doing the collaboration project, you and Casey Vegas. Yeah. Who else you been working with as a lady? I heard Hip Boy, Boy Wonder. Yeah. Who else you been in the studio with? Yeah, I'm real big on working with producers, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I really want to give people just crazy sounds, different mm -hmm. vibes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Boy Wonder and Hip Boy, um, my homie Lunas, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? My own producer, the cartoons, like, they all give different vibes that I feel like people haven't heard. Um, with, with Boy One Day and Hip Boy, they produce for a lot of the hotter rappers, but they still got more sounds that yeah. people are not aware of. And I kind of put that on my back to give people that, so I've been working with them crazy. And uh, shout out to the homie Chris Brown, shout out to Wiz. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's gonna be some cool collabs. Okay, okay. All uh, right, you got a title for the new project? Nah, not yet, but I'm gonna let y'all know ASAP. Though. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, um, for your birthday, you released a seven track EP. What yeah. made you do that? I just like making music, you know what I'm saying? We was out in New York, and that's like the birthplace of hip-hop, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I was out there on my birthday in the studio, went on no club stuff or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. We was just in the lab with my producer, and we was just knocking out records, knocking out records, and I was like, man, I just want to put out a tape for my birthday, just out of celebration of life, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people want to be rappers. I actually got the opportunity to do this full time, so why not keep giving people music? Okay, now you did a few shows with Mac Miller in the UK. Yeah. I want to ask you, what was that like? And also, what's the differences in their music scene over there and our music scene over here? Um, first, that experience was crazy. That was my first time ever leaving the country, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So for me to experience it and have sold out shows and stuff like that, it was a blessing. And I really appreciated it. Um, I think they're a lot more appreciative for the music over there. They're not coming to to stand there and look at you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're ready to turn up, they're ready to have a good time. Fans are super interactive, and like I said, it's more so for the love, you know what I'm saying? Not just because it's the high place yeah. to be at, but they really know what's going on over there, so salute to the UK. Now, uh, you touched different countries, been to different places. What's your coolest experience so far? Man, I think uh, going to the UK was the coolest experience, you know, because like I said, so many people from the side never leave the country. My parents never left the country, you know what I'm saying? So it's like for me to represent my family like that, it was dope. And then outside of that, just being able to record with guys like Rose and Meek and Wale and them and be on the same songs with them, like, it's dope, man. Okay. Now, uh, before we get out of here, I gotta ask you, I know you're a sneakerhead. Uh, yeah. I know you signed to Puma, so yeah. your number one through five is Puma, 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 Puma. Right. Five through ten, what's your top sneaks? Puma still. Still, I got it. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to leave the people with before we get out of here? Oh, man, just salute to Philly, man. Thanks for embracing me, you know what I'm saying? So it should be real crazy tonight. But uh, on top of that, just know that, you know, I got new music coming. I'm out here getting better, so every project is going to be better than the last one. Yeah, stay in tune with me. All right, it's your boy E-Money, chilling with the homie Rocky Fresh. Yeah. Signing out with hip-hop since 1987.com. Salute. 
Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com.